All right. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon po para sa ating mga kababayan sa Pilipinas. And good afternoon to our uh, friends all over Asia and the Pacific. Welcome to the third episode of Learning and Teaching, Assess, Adapt, Implement. So this is quite interesting and it's really, this topic's really, really close to my heart because this is just what we need. This is what I believe that we need in this time of pandemic, what we need to um, talk about. How might we reimagine uh, the future of education? How might we um, give life, inspire, strengthen, and you know, um, think of possibilities beyond the problems that we're encountering? But we will also talk about how, what happens when it's bordering on toxic positivity. So we will talk about that more later together with our um, keynote speaker. But for now, let me do my duties for our co-founder, uh, uh, Paula Spinas. Um, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from Masbate, especially Mayor Natty and uh, Ma'am Jocelyn Takura. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Pa. And then uh, everything's, you know, uh, really, really uh, fluid and what have you. So might as well plug our own uh, service offering at Praxis Associates. Despite the pandemic, the lockdowns, and everything else, feel free to uh, talk to us if you need help in events um, management and what have you. If it's a meeting, a conference, or uh, no matter what field or business of, or career you have, the pandemic has really, really shifted everyone's work system online. We do everything online nowadays, no? And if you need help in managing this virtual meetings, webinars, conferences, and other online events, feel free to reach us at info at praxis.ph or info at praxis.ph or through our social media accounts posted on the screen. It's at praxis.pa. So shameless plug first. No? <laughs> and of course, we want to know who's in the room. So now, uh, grab your phone and scan. It's, uh, everything's being scanned nowadays because we're contactless, right? Grab your phone, scan the code, uh, the QR code found on your screen, or go to menti.com and enter the code 2834411. Again, go to menti.com and enter the code 2834411. We just want to know who's in the room because in the past um, episodes, we had audiences from the Philippines, uh, UAE, from Vietnam, from all over Asia and the Pacific. And it doesn't matter what time you are in, what time zone you are in. No? So do we have um, our results there? Okay, Philippines and other parts of Asia. Okay, come on guys, <laughs> get those uh, votes uh, in. But uh, I can see in our chat box that um, a lot of our teachers have already um, pointed out that they are from all over the Philippines or the Neta. We have San Mateo, Makati, and yeah, more, more cities in the country. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And as teachers, we always uh, do our expectations check so as not to disappoint ev uh, anyone, no? So now, what are you expecting from our session today? So again, uh, go to menti.com. Okay, oh, I can, I can still see. <laughs> okay, okay. Some more answers. Okay, what are you expecting from this session? Anything, uh, anything that uh, pops, pops up into your mind? Is it um, to learn something new about being, you know, positive in life? How can I apply being positive in, inside the classroom, especially it's, it's a virtual, no? We're doing distance learning. Oh, interactive speaker. Okay, we will try our very, very best to do that. That's why we're using these tools. And mind you, teachers, you can also use such tools in your own classes. We have lots of uh, online collaborative tools that are free and um, they're really, really generous nowadays, especially for teachers. Uh, there are some, some um, companies offered free codes for the education sector. Certificate, learn something new. Uh, appreciative learning and teaching for their own classes. New te technologies and teaching might not be exactly what uh, we're going to do, but it's application for sure. Teaching the new normal. 
Okay, strategies, fun session. Okay, of course, of course. In every every episode, that's what we're trying to achieve. <laughs> okay, all right. I think we're good. And this won't be possible without the help of our organizers and partners. Uh, let me do a shout out for, of course, Praxis Associates, Move Up, and Up Up Technologies, our co our co organizers and our community partners, Learning Synergies, Marketing in Vietnam, Racket Scientists, Wacosep, Jump Digital, WhenInManila.com, DepEd Tayo, HR Tech Asia, Bright Lights Academic Tutorials and Learning Center, Working Moms, Beyond Milestones Child Development Center, Multiple Intelligence International Thailand, More Than a Desk, Sikhai, Nation of Heroes Movement, and Comulab Strategies, and of course, Fixer. All right. Thank you so much for supporting the learning and teaching webinar series. And this is actually the third webinar series that uh, Practice Associates and Up Up Technologies uh, have been uh, co-organizing since April, since the lockdowns. So that's how we adapted and, you know, tried to um, re-strategize and pivot our business direction. But since we're live and more than, I think it's more than 20 pages and Facebook's now flagging our account <laughs> for having a big crowd. Uh, our correspondents will help me out in sorting and uh, organizing your questions. First up is our Vietnam correspondent, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello. Ah, okay. Let, let me go to our Zoom correspondent first, Jamie. Hi, Miss Sam. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Jamie, how about okay. you? I'm good. Um, ah, thank yeah. you so much, Miss Sam, for um, being the fabulous host today. Um, hello, everybody in the Zoom room. I will be your Zoom correspondent or, or Zoom master for today's session. So if you guys have any questions, please just write them in the chat box and I will select the questions to put to our, our keynote speaker today. So please don't be shy. Uh, please do ask some questions. Thank you, Miss Sam. Yeah, especially if the, the topics and the Key points are really, really interesting and hot. You can't really wait till the end, no? So pop in your question in our Zoom chat box. And next up is Neon from the Philippines. Neon? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know what? This topic is really significant for our educators as we are, as the Philippines is still preparing and coping for the new normal and even the next normal kind of education. So for those who are watching via Facebook Live or Zoom, feel free to drop your comments and let's have a fruitful discussion later on. Thanks, Miss Sam. Thank you, Neon. And next up, our international correspondent, Cash. Hi, Cash. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. I'll be your international correspondent for today. I'll be handling our social, some of our social media pages. So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave it in the comment section or you can leave it here in the Zoom chat box and me and my fellow correspondents will take care of them. So I'm looking forward to a fruitful discussion as well and um, let's all learn together. Yeah, so proud of this team, our team who will make your Zoom and Facebook Live experience more memorable, enjoyable, and what have you. And of course, uh, our own webinar goddess and tech correspondent, Tony, to give you Zoom basics and other orientation. Thank you, Sam. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning to, to other uh, parts of the world. Um, yeah, I'm here to be your tech correspondent. But before that, let me thank um, one of our co-organizers, Move Up. So please watch this video. Okay, so let's proceed with the Zoom basics. So the most important functions of Zoom for, that we'll be using for today are the following. The first one is um, the mute, the mic button to mute or unmute your mic, the video button to show or hide your video, the chat box to launch a chat box, uh, wherein you can key in your questions to our speakers, 
And then the last one is the reactions button to show your reactions to our speaker. And for the house rules, okay, so for all the participants in Zoom, we ask everyone to kindly mute your mic and turn off your video while the session is ongoing. Submit your questions via chat box and Facebook comments, and you can do so while the session is ongoing, and our correspondents will take note of them, and the host will acknowledge you if it's uh, time for you to ask. And in the last one, um, the speaker will be answering the questions on the panel discussion. So before I give the mic back to Sam, let me show to you what Praxis is. Please watch this video. Thank you, Praxis, for, well, I thank my teammates for being with us ever since, you know, uh, the challenge of lockdown that everything happened. Uh, we're still trying to uh, do service to the communities that we serve, uh, especially the MSMEs. So, yeah, feel free to contact us. All right, and now let's go to the heart of our um, session this afternoon, the keynote speech. Let me introduce our keynote speaker. Emily D.D. Cullen is an Associate Professor of the National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions, University of the Philippines, Manila. Concurrent Program Chair, Diploma on Master of Social Work and Diploma in Women and Development, UP Open University, and Affiliate Professor, College of Public Affairs and Development, UP Los Banos. She was a former Dean of the Graduate School and School of Education, Arts and Sciences of Colegio de San Juan de la Trancalamba. Dr. Nicolen is a former professor of the following Korean universities, Hancock University of Foreign Studies, Catholic University of Korea, Gyeongju University, and Catholic University of Daegu. She is also the former president of the Association of Filipino Educators in Korea and one of the founding mem board members in the Global Semu um, Educate, uh, Development Network, an international NGO founded by the Park Chung-hee School of Policy and Symbol of Young Mom University, South Korea. She's an educator, manager, and administrator, international public speaker, researcher, book author of published and self-published inspirational books, counselor, life coach, pastoral worker, and a volunteer. As an appreciative inquiry champion, she lives the AI principles and integrates them in her parenting, teaching, researching, coaching, mentoring, and facilitating seminars and workshops. Everyone, let us all welcome Dr. Dikalem. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really very glad to meet all of you this afternoon. I see that we are around more than 100 on Zoom. I don't know how many are on uh, Facebook, but I'm really glad that our participants are from all over the Philippines, and we also have from Vietnam and Nepal, now ba based on the survey and the the chats that I saw a while ago. So it's really been a pleasure, no? and uh, I'm really happy to be able to share with you something no, that I learned perhaps from what, from the, from my studies and also from my own experience. No? And when I was just reading your expectations, no, I was amazed. <laughs> I hope, I hope that I will be able to really meet your expectations. Some of them may not be 100%, part, pardon me for that, but perhaps there's going to be another venue for that, right? Okay. So again, welcome. And let me now share with you my topic or my presentation. Okay. So, you know, as a teacher myself or an educator myself, and I assume that most of our participants today are either teachers or school administrators or educators in general, no? because I know some of the participants right now, they have been my students since college, perhaps. No? Some of them are my colleagues, actually. No? 
So I know that they are into the uh, they they work now with the academy. So you know, I'm sure you share with my dilemma. No, my dilemma is as we prepare ourselves or as we face not this what they call the new normal all the more that i feel some kind of you know fear perhaps or some kind of anxiety just now no we up professors are let's say cramming so sorry for the term no but we're trying to cram no, for our course packs because everything should be ready by the opening of classes next week so my honestly my anxiety level is really you know, increasing. And I'm pretty sure you participants, teachers, and educate or school administrators share you now with my experience. No. So today I'm going to share with you, as I said, one of the recommended. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it's the only, no, but what I'm saying is one of the approaches, teaching and learning approaches, perhaps, that we can adopt or something that we can use no, in our classes during this pandemic so that we will be able to uh, learn also from the experiences of our students. No? Now, how long this pandemic be, we do not know. Not even, not one of us would know when will it end. Therefore, hopefully through this lecture or the sharing that I'm going to give you this afternoon, you'll be able to proactively brace yourselves or uh, prepare yourselves towards meeting our students during the opening of classes or perhaps no helping ourselves as we go through this uncertain no time of the world no this is really as they say a worldwide it's a global crisis so let's brace ourselves with something that we can use not only during this time but even after the pandemic that's why it's called appreciative teaching and learning a post pandemic approach now Okay, as a teacher, usually we start with learning outcomes. Am I correct? No? So uh, what are our learning outcomes? First, examine the meaning, principles, and cycle of AI or appreciative inquiry. Second is to analyze the relevance of appreciative teaching and learning no, or ATL approach during and after the pandemic. And third is to be able to design an, a, an appreciative advising blueprint or you know, a plan applicable to your context so when so when i say to your context either a grade school teacher high school teacher college teacher or school principal or a school administrator so hopefully you know after this lecture you'll be able to design something that is applicable no to your context so you have an assignment okay so you're not only here to listen but you're here not to do an assignment and by the way before I move further, now one of the expectations I read a while ago was that it is interactive. Okay? Now, may I define, may I define my, uh, uh, the word interactive based on my presentation today. I'm not going to use uh, Menti. I'm not going to use Wukla. I'm not going to use, ano pa ba yung iba? I'm not going to use uh, the other, no? Gaming or whatever apps, but it's interactive in the sense that I would like all of you, please, if you have a paper and pen with you, that's going to be a lot, lot better. But if not, no, if you don't have a pen and paper with you, you can make use of your phones to jot down some notes or phrases perhaps or your answers to some questions that I'm going to give you later. Because, because again, as I said, that's how I define interactive in this presentation. It's not technical or technological interactivity, but it's going to be more of writing. Why? Because in appreciative inquiry, writing is one of the processes or methodologies that we make use of. Is that clear? Okay. I hope you're following me in my instructions. Okay. So have a pen, a pen and paper with you or your phone with you or your laptop with you or your tablet or whatever where you can jot down later on some of your answers to the questions that I will be asking you. Okay. Now, moving on. So when we speak about teaching and learning process, no, we refer to some factors that are involved in the whole process. Am I correct? Like, for example, we have the learning environment, you know, the classroom, the school, etc. We have the subject matter or your topic, your, your, your curriculum, no? resources and facilities, no? technology, what else, visual aids, etc. 
what else? Teaching strategies and pedagogies. And what else? Of course, the teacher, the learner, and everything that will contribute to the delivery of quality and effective curriculum. But in my presentation, no, I would like to limit or focus on the following. The teacher, you, every one of you who are listening to me right now, no, ikaw ang bida, no? you are the lead role in this lecture today. And secondly, we are going to talk about the learner or the student and of course the approach that I'm going to introduce to you this afternoon. Okay, now I know that some of you, especially those who were with me in previous seminars or webinars or even classes are familiar with what we call appreciative inquiry. However, for the sake of those who heard this for the first time, I'll be giving a very, very brief background because the principles that we will get from AI, I call it AI or appreciative inquiry, are very much important and significant in the application of the appreciative teaching and learning approach that we will be discussing later on. Okay, so let's start from the basics. Now, how do we define appreciate? Right? Okay. Isn't it when we appreciate something or when you appreciate someone, no, it means that we put value into it or you put value into it. No? It's associated with some price. So when something is given to you, no, a bag, for example, or a pair of shoes or something that's very important, you put value into it, right? So even when we appreciate someone, no, we esteem that person, right? Like we put some kind of a respect, no? No, we respect that person, we honor that person. So in other words, no, in Tagalog, no, I may say it in Tagalog, sabi nila, when we appreciate something, no, yan ay isang tao o bagay na mahalaga. Mahalaga. And in Tagalog, napakaganda ng kanyang kahulugan. Kasi ang mahalaga daw ay mahal, alaga, talaga. Okay? Mahal alaga talaga. Kaya siya ay mahalaga. Okay. So, you know what? People in general, no, I'm not trying to, ano, but you know, in general people, no, usually it's very easy for us to see the, the negative thing, the wrong thing. For example, during this time of pandemic, no, the initial thing for us to do is we complain, ano ba yan? No, puro, puro tayo reklamo. In other words, we often hear no, our friends telling us, huwag kang judgmental, ano ka ba? Don't judge me. Di ba? Pero, you know, humans as we are, as I said, it's really very easy for us to judge. Pero in appreciative inquiry, huwag ka daw judgmental. No? Don't be judgmental. Why? Because, you know, again, as I said, it's very easy for us to look at something that is negative. Okay? However, when we appreciate no, they say that it really takes a lot of effort, you know, to wear that appreciative eye. Parang hang kukuha ng salamin. Tingnan ko nga, ano nga bang maganda rito? You know, something like that. No? So wearing that appreciative eye, that is what we mean by appreciating. Okay. Now, how, we def how do we define inquiry? To inquire. Okay. To inquire means to what? No? to discover, to search, to explore, or to study. No? So, to discover what? To discover what works well. To discover strengths. To discover something that inspires. No? To discover something that is possible. In other words, it's the search, it's the exploration, or the study of what's inspiring, what is life-giving, and what works well. In other words, no, when we inquire, we try to discover the best of what is, what's working well. Okay? And there, it's a study, no, para kang when you do research, right? It's a matter of inquiry, you ask questions, no, those who are into their dissertation or thesis writing stage, no, you inquire, you ask questions. Okay? So that is what we mean by inquire. Now, we put the two terms together, appreciative inquiry. What then is appreciative inquiry? Appreciative inquiry is defined no, as the search for what is life-giving. 
it's the exploration, it's the discovery of what's life giving and what is possible within people no? and the world around us. So, in our present context of this pandemic, we know it's a very, very unfavorable experience. All of us have, you know, gone through a lot of challenges and difficulties because of this pandemic. But the question is, have you ever asked yourselves, what so far you know, was life-giving, inspiring you know, during this time of the pandemic? You know, it's something like, uh, we try to find out, of course, the situation, the context is really very scary. Uh -huh. It's so uncertain. But in the midst of these uncertainties, in the midst of these challenges, now what gives us life? You ask yourselves, what's, what's giving you life? What's inspiring you? Now what motivates you to get up in the morning and do your lessons or, you know, prepare something for the family? Or, for example, those who have started online classes in some of the schools, especially in the private schools, I know some of the private schools did not uh, uh, follow what the DepEd was saying and because they started with their classes. So what is it in you, no? Or what is it that is inspiring that every morning you wake up and then you meet your students online? Okay? Despite not being able to meet your friends or your family members, and worst is, I know some of us no, have family members who have, uh, who have lost no, some of our family members during this pandemic. But you see, I know it's a very, very sad experience. But have you ever asked yourself or yourselves, no, despite what happened or despite this pandemic, what is it that is life-giving? What is it that's possible? Okay, so moving on, appreciative inquiry is what? No? It's something that is intentional. It's something that is deliberate. Again, as I said, humans as we are, it's always easy to what? To look at the negative. But in appreciative inquiry, you exert some kind of effort. It's an intentional asking of what we want to accelerate, what we want to grow, with the realization that what we appreciate appreciates again i repeat it's intentional okay intentionally look looking for what accelerates or what increases what grows so that what we appreciate really appreciates we get it okay so that is appreciative inquiry again another wonderful uh, characteristic of appreciative inquiry is that it builds on what is working no? It builds on what is working well rather than focusing on the problem or rather than focusing on what's problematic what's, or what's difficult. No? I'm, again, I'm sure human as we are, madal, mahirap gawin to. No? Mahirap hanapin kung ano yung maganda. Mahirap hanapin kung ano yung mabuti. But in appreciative inquiry, we deliberately, we intentionally, we exert an effort to look what is work, look for what is working well, rather than focusing on the problem. Okay, now we have experienced the pandemic, but the question is, it's almost six months right now. No? If we started, let's say March, April, May, June, July, August. Okay, let's say six months of staying home. No, what was it that worked well in six months that you were home? Have you tried appreciating that you have good internet connectivity, that you have gadgets, you have computers? You know, these are the things that's, you know, that were working well. That's why you were able to connect with your friends and with your family members despite, despite physical distancing. What else? What worked well? Your job. How many thousands of people all over the world lost their jobs during this pandemic? But here you are, a teacher, an educator, be it private or public or government, you still have a job. Isn't that something that really worked well? That because of your career, because of your job, you have some kind of you know, finances to be able to support your family. So these are the blessings no? 
that we count no, during this time of the pandemic. And one most important thing, I guess, no, that all of us had and until now have no, during this time of the pandemic is good health. Is that not a blessing? Good health, we are healthy. No, we were not affected by the virus, you see? So these are the things that's working well. And why don't we just focus on them mm -hmm. rather than on the difficulties? Okay. Moving on. Now, David Cooper Ryder. Who is David Cooper Ryder? David Cooper Ryder is the one no, who discovered or who was the one who made use of uh, appreciative inquiry in the early 80s. No? Appreciative inquiry, by the way, is originally an uh, OD or Organization Development Intervention. No? Uh, David Cooper Ryder tried to help a certain organization who was into bankruptcy. No? I think it was a hotel. No? And then he made use of this. And then he found out that, ha, ah, this really works. And then later on, it evolved. No? They, uh, how do you call this? AI as an organization of the intervention evolved into something like a, a strategic planning strategy, team, uh, team building strategy, what else? Leadership. That's why we have appreciative leadership. And now as a teaching approach or a teaching methodology. Okay. David Cooper Ryder said, in every piece of art, there is beauty. Do you agree? That in every piece of art, there is beauty. So, again, in the context of the pandemic, we know pandemic itself, the COVID-19 pandemic itself is not good news because all of us are, you know, feeling its impact nowadays. But look what happened. Because of this pandemic, you had time to be with your family 24-7, <laughs> which you were not able to do before because you were busy working. What else? You had time to do other things that you never had the chance to do before because you had, the, you had plenty of time. No, plenty of time for silence, for prayer, you know, and doing a lot of things that were, you know, not done before. See, during the beginning of the pandemic, you see a lot of people sharing their food. You know, in UPLB, for example, you no, know, there were hundreds of, uh, how do you call this, dormers who were locked down inside the dormitory. You can just imagine the generosity of the people in Los Baños. No? They were all crowding at the gate of UPLB, giving them food, you know, anything that you could share with them. So there's beauty. So na discover natin na man no, is good. Man is generous, right? So in every piece of art, as David Cooper Ryder said, there is beauty. Kahit nag-aano ka-abstract pa yung piece of art na yan, right? There is always beauty. Now, in appreciative inquiry or in AI, it's very important not to consider the questions we ask. Because sometimes the questions that we ask, the, the, the answers that we get depends on the questions we ask. Do you agree with me? So when your question is something negative, like, are you, are, uh, are you angry? Galit ka? Uh, diba? Usually, the answer that you get, oh, bakit? You know? But if you put your question in a more positive way, I'm pretty sure you'd also get a positive answer. Okay? So let's consider, what are the questions that we ask? Do the questions we ask encourage the other person to open up? Hmm? Or do the questions we ask, no? makes the person just shut up, uh, shut his mouth up and then say, no, I don't want to say anything anymore. Or even, you know, even when we, deal with, we ask questions from our students, do we ask encouraging questions? Or just questions answerable by yes or no? Are our questions encouraging for the person to open up? Second, where is the question coming from? No? Is the question coming from anger or is the question coming from what envy? No? We have to think first of the question and you know, so we try to put ourselves in the shoes of the other person so that we know how the person would feel. No? Or why are we even asking the question? Because you want to put the person in a very you know, embarrassing situation para ipahiya siya. No? Why are we asking the question? 
And how can our questions no, lead us to the point or to the future that we want? Mm -hmm. Yan. So, dear participants, while listening to me no, and asking you these questions, I also want you to ask yourselves, those, I mean, jot down or maybe in your mind, no, you try to answer these questions. So, that is what I mean by interactive. You are not only listening to me, but you're answering the questions. No? Unfortunately, we cannot maximize the chat box no, and others, but again, as I said a while ago, please journey with me no, in the whole process of this lecture. Okay. So in other words, we need to check our motives in asking questions. No? We have to sometimes rephrase our questions, and I'm telling you, it's not easy. Asking AI questions is not easy. It takes a lot of practice. Until such time that AI becomes your way of life. See? So AI is not only a methodology, it's not only an approach, but it's also a way of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moving on. Now, here are some questions, I mean, AI questions that we can ask during this pandemic. These are just some samples. For example, instead of complaining, bayan, no, walang ayuda, the government's blah, 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 blah. Instead of complaining, why don't you just ask yourself this question? How can I help stop the, sp the spread of the virus? No? How can I be a part of the solution and not part of the problem? Or how can I discover more about myself while I'm physically distant from others? No? I'm sure a lot of people are saying, I'm so bored, I've been at home for six months already, I cannot do anything. But you see, it's time to what? Discover things that you have not done before. But now you have the time. For example, uh, I'm making myself as an example. I really wanted to learn how to play an instrument, but I didn't have any chance. So during the lockdown or during this pandemic, no, our office no, in UP Manila and TPC, we have this every Friday kumustahan with our students and our faculty. So we play ukulele together, see? So it's distressing. At the same time, you are learning a new passion or a new skill. So how can you discover more about yourself? Like earlier, just um, a few minutes before we started actually, I had an online counseling, no? Sinasabi niya na, grabe nga yung bakasyon, no? Nga yung, no, not bakasyon. During the pandemic, all these things are coming to me. So I said, that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity, no? To think, to reflect, and to pray. Okay, what else? What else can I do to maximize time while I'm home? Again, as I said, discover. What else? Yung, ah, yeah, I know some of the participants here and i've seen their their posts on facebook like uh, they are gardening see they're baking that's how you disco i mean maximize your time you while you are at home right okay so maybe no you can discover also ano nga kaya, no? what else can i do and you know what dear participants the reason why I'm giving so much emphasis to these questions, no, is because you can exact you can ask exactly the same questions from your students. Okay? You can ask them the same questions no? from your learners when you had you and you will meet them no? in your classes. Okay? Now moving on. So, in other words, now in asking AI questions, we consider asking. What do I want more of, not less of? What do I want to start, not to stop? What do I want to create, not to remove? What do I want to support and not to prevent? And what do I want to reinforce and not weaken? No? So to create perhaps a new strategy of relating with your family members or better relationships, you know what? Since you've been no, uh, with your family members for a uh, quite a long time now, I'm sure you have discovered a lot of things about them for the first time. Why? Why? Because your kids are with you 24-7, you know? So maybe you are thinking now, how else can I improve my relationship with my siblings, for example, or from, with my children, with my brothers and my sisters? 
or with your parents, no? What do I want to support? And not to stop, perhaps you would like to support more sustainable activities and advocacies to promote health, environment, no? Like in my case, for example, what did I start during this pandemic? Because my daughter no, was also a COVID positive. I was also COVID positive before. But when she got, you know what, got well, I started my advocacy. And that is sharing appreciative inquiry because that helped me a lot during that stage. No? Or what do I want to create or not remove? No? What do I want to support? What do I want to reinforce? And not to weaken or not to stop. So these are the very important considerations no? when we ask AI questions. So I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. Again, as I said, get a pen and a paper with you or your cell phone, jot it down. What do you want to appreciate or what do you want to grow at this time of the pandemic? What do you want to appreciate? What do you want to grow? What do you want to improve? What do you want more of at this time of the pandemic? Okay. Good job, <laughs> teachers and school administrators. Moving on, in other words, during this time of the pandemic, we try our very best to focus on what appreciates, what grows, not on the problem. Okay? Now, we're done no, with, the, with the meaning no, of appreciative inquiry. Now we go to the 4D cycle of appreciative inquiry. Now, this is very important no, because this is where you base later on your appreciative teaching and learning approach. Okay? So what are the 4D cycle of appreciative inquiry, okay? So you can see on your screen an illustration of the four phases of AI, which are discover, dream, design, and destiny, okay? Now let us discuss each of these phases and find out what each phase entails. The first B is to discover. It is the phase of appreciating. What do we appreciate? We appreciate that which gives life, that which inspires, what motivates, what is worth appreciating. So in this time of the pandemic, again, as I said, you have to discover what gives life, what inspires, and what motivates, okay? So for example, it can be your co-workers no, that gives life or perhaps a significant other <laughs> or a special someone who inspires you despite, you know, have these things that are happening around us. It can be your family, no? It can be your children, who else? Your career, your job, see? These are things that inspire us no? during this pandemic. Now, these are some guide questions that we can ask no? at this stage. And again, as I said, dear teachers, these are also questions that you can ask later on no? with your students. For example, what was or were the best thing or things that happened to you during this crisis? Or what were your blessings during the pandemic? Reasons why you survived. And what motivates you today no, to help make tomorrow better for others? Okay, so again, I'll give you a few seconds to answer one of those questions. It's not all the questions now but one of those questions the best of what is or the best thing that ever happened to you or your blessings or what motivates you to help make tomorrow better for you and other people okay now that's the first d to discover. Now we move to the second day, which is dream. The second phase means innovating. Now, what do we innovate? No? Here, we try to dream of what might be or what might, might possibly happen no? or your desires or what you envision. 
that's going to happen in the future. Okay? So we dream of what might be, no? what possibly might happen, what you desire, and what you envision. And again, here are some sample questions that you can ask your students, but you should be able to answer first. And the reason why I started my lecture with you, the teacher, is because what you will learn from this session is something that you will share or translate to your students, okay? So the questions for the second B, which is dreaming, is what do you want to see in yourself or your family or your community or the world after this pandemic? Do you want to see yourself as more empowered teacher and a more, how do you call this, more considerate? administrator or what do you want to see in your family closer relationship in your community or if you were to make three wishes for yourself your family your community or the world what would it be or how do you envision yourself your family and your community five to ten years from now do you envision of a world that is more compassionate, more collaborative, more caring, more loving? Okay. So I'll give you another, uh, what, 30 seconds to answer any of those questions. It can be three wishes. How do you see yourself five to ten years from now? What do you want to see in your family or yourself or your community? Okay, now that you have identified your wishes and your vision of yourself or what you want to happen to yourself or your family or community, we move to the third B, which is the design. Co-constructing. Okay, what does it mean? No? We design what should be. We design what is ideal. And we transform to reality. Meaning, no, it is in now in this phase, the third phase, where we transform our best of what is from the first D, which is to discover, and then translate the, these dreams, no, these wishes, into something that is more concrete. Mm -hmm. So we co-construct. Because we collectively and collaboratively work towards achieving those that we wished, those that we envision of ourselves and our community to be. In planning, no, ito yung tinasinasabi nila na the, pla the, the, the real planning stage. No, the real planning stage when you sit down no, and you design what's going to happen based on your wishes or your vision or your yeah the vision of yourself and based on the discoveries of your strengths and what inspires are you getting me okay i hope no now what are the sample questions that we could ask or you can answer no in this third d to achieve the person or family or community or the world that you envision after this crisis what do you need to do and therefore, I'd say after this lecture, what are you going to do? No? How do you do it? And what resources do you need to be able to implement your wishes or that vision? Mm -hmm. Do you need help from your family members? No? When do you do it? No, will you start after this seminar or maybe tomorrow, next week, next semester, next year? I don't know. It's all up to you. How do you do it? No? What resources do you need? Do you need money? <laughs> do you need the support of your family members? See? So that is the third D. Now we move on to the fourth and the last D, which is destiny. Sustaining. What do we sustain? No, and this is the stage now where, isn't it? You have discovered the best of what is. You have dreamed. Uh, you have, uh, yeah, and then later on you designed. 
Now, this is the implementation phase. In the implementation phase, no, or in this fourth D, it's the, you know, the time to be empowered. Now you can implement your plans. Now you can do it. Now, in the process no, of implementing your dreams and your wishes, there were some things that need some revisions or need some adjustments. Then that's the time for you to adjust. It's also a time to learn new things and improvise, improvise if there is a need. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, these are the questions that we can ask in this stage. Number one, what can I contribute to accomplish what I want myself, my family, community, or world to become? You know, it, yeah, we can make wishes. We can, you know, design a vision for ourselves. But we have to do it. In other words, action is needed. So what can you do personally to accomplish your vision of yourself or your family? How can I continue to empower myself, my family, and the world? And what did, do I need to do? No? To change for the better for myself, for my society, for my family, for my school, for that matter. See? So, these are the four Ds of appreciative inquiry. Discover, dream, design, and destiny. Now, the reason why I ask you to jot down your answers to the questions, I hope you did, is because during this time of the pandemic, I attended a webinar also. No? And in that webinar, they're saying that during this time of the pandemic, we, it's very helpful to document our experiences. Some are encouraged to write diaries mga COVID-19 diaries, mga lockdown diaries, mga ganyan. No? We need to document our experiences. Why? Because this documentation are very, very helpful so that we can come up with what they call appreciative stories. And appreciative storytelling is one of the tools of AI. No? It's a tool which encourages you, participants, to take a positive perspective by rediscovering and recognizing what's going well. See, what works well rather than focusing on the problems. Now, for example, no? if I ask you the question, 10 to 20 years from now, how will you tell the story of COVID-19 pandemic? To your children or to your grandchildren? Again, I repeat, 10 to 20 years from now, how will you tell the story of COVID-19 pandemic to your children and to your grandchildren? Will you tell them that, you know, parang yung mga, the ones we read in the history books, no? that during this time, no, this many number of soldiers died, blah, blah, blah. No? But during this pandemic, for example, what are the things that you will tell them? Will you talk about the, the uh, thousands of people who died during the COVID-19 pandemic or how people lost their jobs? Hmm? Now, in appreciative storytelling, we tell something that is what? Inspiring. That is one something that is life-giving, something that is strengthening, something that is empowering. So that the more we tell appreciative stories, the more that people are strengthened. Instead na manghina sila, they feel what? Strengthened, empowered, and appreciated. Okay? Again, as I said, it's not easy. See? But after this session, I encourage you to go back to your notes, if you made some notes, and then just come up with one or two paragraphs of appreciative storytelling. How will you tell them? You know what, dear granddaughter, dear, uh, dear grandson, no? 20 years ago, I attended this uh, seminar the, by Mom Ems about appreciative inquiry. And I, you know, I realized that blah, blah, blah. Will you tell them that? See? Okay. Appreciative storytelling. It's a tool no? in appreciative inquiry. Now, Fred Rogers, no, he's a comedian, he's also a pastor, by the way, no, once said, 
that when I was a boy, no, and I would see scary things in the news, no, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. You get it. Yeah, there are challenging situations happening, especially this pandemic, but there will always be people who are helping. There will always be good things happening. And that is what we should discover. Now, I'd like to share this with you because teachers, no, mindfulness is also one of the things that could help us to implement appreciative inquiry or to, to live appreciative inquiry and appreciative teaching and learning as an approach. Uh, I, I was struck no, a few weeks, weeks or days ago, no, I attended a webinar. No, the title of the webinar was uh, uh, Mindfulness. What was the title? No, mindfulness and Self-Care, Essentials for Remote Learning, no, given by uh, uh, Dr. Hani Karandang. No? And she said that your coffee is there for you. Are you there for your coffee? You know, in AI, we really have to spend time to appreciate the things around us. And that's mindfulness. I know we are all very busy, honestly. But the thing is, have we found time to appreciate the little things that we have every day, starting from our coffee? I was struck because I'm a coffee drinker, <laughs> I'm a coffee lover. I start my day with coffee. And you know what? I was also sharing this with my sister. No, I told her, you know what? During the early stage of the lockdown, I really had enough time to, to enjoy my coffee in the morning while praying and reflecting. But when we started work from home, no, when we started our course packs and curriculum revisions and all that, I failed. To enjoy my coffee so it was a reminder to myself that hey emily don't go too fast yeah you have to accomplish a lot of things but you have to go slow why because you see we are the carers teachers school administrators are carers we may not be frontliners just just like the doctors and the nur nurses and health professionals but we are carers carers of our own students. But the question is, who will care for the carers? Have you ever thought of that? Who will care for you? Why don't you start with yourself? So be mindful of the things that you're doing. Enjoy every moment. No, don't feel guilty when you are, you know, oversleeping. You deserve that. Don't feel guilty when you have yourself some kind of treat yourself to a massage. You deserve that. When you are not doing anything, don't feel guilty. You deserve silence. You deserve a good rest. Because teachers and administrators, we are entering the new normal. And we need to care for ourselves. Is that clear? No. So we have to care for the carer. And we start it with ourselves. Okay? There. Now. And therefore, no, let's also try to consider this pandemic as an opportunity. No? An opportunity to ask questions like, what are my strengths? What do I want to grow? What passion do I want to cultivate? What else can I be? How else can I be a better person, a better mother? What else? A better father, a better brother, better sister, a better wife, a better husband, a better teacher, a better school administrator. Thus, the question, who am I? No? I all, this is one of my reflections also. Yeah, I think that was several Sundays ago. Okay? Now, I cannot share with you technological skills of teaching, but what I can proudly share with you are the posters that I'm showing you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not plugging or promoting any, you know, any app or whatever, but these are from Canva. See, you can be... You can try to be creative. And those are, you no, know, this is one of the things that I may, I'm proud to say that I was productive no, during this pandemic. I was able to equip myself with some skills that could make my uh, teaching more interesting and more engaging. Okay? So we teachers, we school administrators are the one preparing no, ourselves first before we can finally meet our students. 
And now, since I think hopefully all of you are equipped now with AI, uh, how do you call this, uh, principles, we now talk about the learner. And thereby, we talk about appreciative teaching learning or appreciative teaching and learning. Now, the question is, why is appreciative teaching learning one of the, I, I, I was very clear, I'm not saying it's the best, I'm not saying it's the only, but I'm saying it's one of the recommended post-pandemic approaches during this, uh, during this period, no, when we start our classes. Why? I would like to begin with some statistics or surveys, and these are very recent. No? In a recent survey, no, it revealed that 50% of the respondents no, of that survey are suffering from anxiety or depression, while 17% probably affected by it. And it's quite alarming, right? Imagine 50% of those respondents. Now, school administrators are listening to me right now. Have you ever tried doing a survey of your learners or your students? Teachers, when you first meet them during the first day of classes, try to make some kind of, you just feel the group, you know, who among your students are suffering from anxiety and depression. Okay, it's quite high, no? And this attributed, this is attributed according to that survey, no, to the severe disruption to learning and working compounded by the health crisis. So we had to stop our face-to-face -face classes abruptly sometime March because of the spread of the virus. And then after that, months or weeks after that, no, we have heard of news, no, like parents losing their jobs because businesses were not really doing fine. And then the increase of this, uh, the, the cases of COVID-19, the increase of death. So these are all affecting our young learners. And when I say young, when I say young, age doesn't matter. They can be eight years old, 12 years old, 18, 19, 20s, they are all affected. You might not be aware, especially parents who are listening to me right now, but your kids are affected. Like, I'll give you one example, if I may share, no? Uh, yung isa sa aking mga ako, no? One time sabi niya, no, I cannot sleep. Why? Because I'm scared. Something might happen during the night and mommy and daddy will just go away and then they will forget about me and then I'll be left at home eight years old. But wow! That's the extent of the effect. If young people have that fear, how much more adults like us? And this is valid, very valid feeling, the fear of the unknown. Okay? See? So these are the, the what do you call this, possible you know, problems or experiences that our young learners in our classes you know, are having right now. And to continue, the stress or depression are due to thinking about delayed graduation or failure, especially in higher education. No? It means one semester delay means one semester of delay in work and therefore one semester delay of helping the family. We had to adjust. Like, for example, in the UP system, no? it's 12 units maximum instead of the regular load. So you can just imagine. So it's either they are delayed or next semester when everything comes back to normal, they have to have more units to be able to, to catch up no? with their ACADs. Okay? Uncertainty about their future career prospects and the lengthened transition from school to work. You can just imagine Ano kaya, no? What's going to be the kind of jobs that will emerge after this pandemic? Will there, will, would these jobs be like work from home? Will there be more work from home arrangements than face-to-face? -face? See? These are the scenarios that we are thinking right now. And we as teachers or educators have to prepare our students or our learners towards that kind of jobs no, that we, they will have in the future. The International Labor Organization Director, Director General said, no, the pandemic is inflicting multiple shocks on young people. It is not only destroying their jobs and employment prospects, but also disrupting their education and training and having a serious impact on their mental well-being. 
you know, it has been reported. No, I have been working with a group no, of uh, social workers who are offering also online counseling. And there are a lot of cases now of domestic violence, child abuse, uh, sexual abuse among young people, among young learners. And we never have that. We don't have an idea of who among our students in class must have that kind of experience. Di natin alam. Therefore, as I said, please, please, no? Try to be keen on observing your students during the first day of classes. Okay, you might say, Mom, but it is, is it's uh, online. How could I monitor them? No? We'll go to that later on. Or for example, no? Modular or whatever. No, we'll go to that question later on. Okay, moving on. So, in an article written by Goldberstein, it says, no, the COVID-19 pandemic may worsen existing mental health problems. Remember, during, I mean, before the pandemic, there was already an increase of mental health issues in our schools, among our learners. But it has worsened, according to Goldberstein. No? And led to more cases among children and adolescents because of the unique combination of the public health crisis, social isolation, and economic recession. Social isolation. Imagine. No? We have not been able to go out for quite some time now. And not go to the malls. You see? So it's really causing a lot of difficulties. Now, so given that scenario, no, there was this research conducted by O. Wanza, Rosnaimi, and Rosalan in 2010. Considering appreciative teaching learning, as a new pedagogical option for educational setting. This research was conducted 10 years ago. And now, 10 years later, I think that's one of the things that we should consider adopting. And in their research, they adopted the 4D cycle of appreciative inquiry. And they came up with this model. So it's the same thing. Discovery, dream, destiny, and design. Now, I will explain later why the design is at the middle. So, they made some kind of modifications. Okay? Now, the first D, of course, is discovery. So, a while ago, we talked about you, the educator. So, this time, let's translate now your role as the one no, facilitating this AI cycle with your students. So, in the discovery phase here, you, the teacher or, or the educator, guides the students in the discovery and the appreciation of their best experiences, the best of what is, no? And then highlight their strengths, their joys, the hap their happiness, okay? And then they are led to discover what brings them new skills, gives them new skills, no? Let them discover their passion, their talents. Allow them to talk about their happy moments with their families during the pandemic something that they enjoy during the pandemic and what motivates them now that they go into modular learning flexible learning blended learning what else online learning no what inspires them no ask them the same questions that i asked you earlier perhaps they would say you know what teacher what gives me life or what inspires me are my parents no or maybe what motivates me to study is because i have complete gadgets no i have a laptop i have a, a, no, a notebook or whatever see allow them to tell their stories is that clear okay so that's the first d in appreciative teaching learning approach the next one is dream you now, as the teacher, oh, of course, I know that during this time of the pandemic, it's really difficult. It's quite challenging to dream. It's quite challenging to, to set some goals for yourself. But you see, your role now as the teacher or as the educator is very crucial. Okay? So the learners or students are given the opportunity to dream or envision themselves no? or their family, what they want to become. No? And they are encouraged to extend their vision of the future, no? not only for themselves, but also no? the, the things that they envision for their family, for their community, to, for the community, or even the world. Allow them to dream. 
Okay? So you ask them questions that gives life, that inspires, and then you help them discover their wishes and how they envision themselves in the future. Okay? And then the next D is what? Design. Design. Allow them to discover ways of making their wishes come true. Ask them the same question. So what will you do? If your wish is to become a doctor, I don't know no, if there will be a lot of students who will be wanting to become doctors nowadays. You know what? I just remember uh, because I teach in the National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions. And my students are telling me, you know what, uh, you know what, Professor? I think nowadays, no, very few students would be want, uh, would, would like to become doctors, nurses, and uh, dentists and other health professionals. I said, why? Because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I hope it will not discourage them. But you see, again, I think that's your role no? as teachers. Allow them to design their dreams. No? Allow them to discover no, their potentials, utilizing the strengths, the best of what is, what inspires them, and what gives them life, and how they translate this into something more concrete. No? Now, how do they construct this? Like, you ask them, who, who do you think will help you realize your dreams or your vision of yourself? Okay? So, as the facilitator, facilitator of learning, you, the teacher, guides them through this process of designing. Okay? And then, the last D is destiny. Okay? Destiny. You know, I'm sure you're all familiar with this. With OBE or outcome-based education, students are taught to be lifelong learners, right? Okay, that even other grad, uh, uh, if after graduating or after graduate uh, graduation, they get to apply what they learn and get to sustain, grow, no, and increase the knowledge, attitudes, and skills that they have learned. Okay, so this is the opportunity for them to be empowered to continue growing, to continue innovating. No? And this is also the time when students get to revise. So again, your role as a teacher is crucial. Because if you think, oh, this, uh, this dream or this destiny is not quite realistic, so you as the teacher is there to guide them, no? to facilitate, no? to change or to revise whatever thing that is to be changed. Okay? So this is when a person gets to learn new things, relearn things that may have been forgotten, and unlearn things that are no longer applicable. So now this completes the cycle of appreciative teaching learning approach. Now notice that at the middle, this is now the modification of the 4D cycle of AI, at the middle is design. Okay? And at the middle, you can see arrows. Now, design to discovery, design to dream, design to destiny. Now, what does it mean? No? What do those arrows mean? No? This implies that in teaching 21st century learners, our learners now, no? technology is a very essential tool in the discovery or in the discovery phase, in the dreaming phase, and in the destiny phase. Okay, so in other words, in our teaching now, using this approach, appreciative teaching and learning, we are encouraged to use technology in allowing them to discover, to dream, no, and to make their career, uh, their goals for the future through the use of technology. I think in 2020, uh, 2000, sorry, it was 2007 said, Learning by doing or active learning or authentic learning and experiential learning is the foreground of today's education. So, we make use of technology. Now, the question is, what if technology is limited? So, that is when the teacher's creativity can come in. Okay? Now, ATL approach or appreciative teaching learning approach is also considered as what? As learner-centered. Learner-centered curriculum, learner-centered approach. Why? Because you allow the students to tell their own story. And therefore, since it's a, a student-centered or learner-centered approach, you must be able to design assessment tools 
that are or also AI and uh, learner-centered in nature. Like, for example, allowing them to write diaries, what else? Peer evaluation, you know? Self-evaluation. Asking them feedback. Now, these are just some assessment tools that you can design you know, using this uh, ATL approach, okay? And therefore, you know, as I said, we allow them to tell their stories, you know, to discover their dreams, and revise them if needed. And therefore, dear teachers, remember that traditionally, the teacher is the expert. But in appreciative teaching learning approach, we are, we, educators and teachers, according to Alison King, we are no longer the sage on the stage, but the guide on the side. I repeat, we teachers with this approach are no longer the, the uh, we are no longer the sage on the stage, but the guide on the side. In other words, we are the facilitators now of learning and allow them to discover their strengths. Okay, now, what's the psychophilo basis of this? Now, when I teach my students in CIPAF about philosophy, now, some of them I think are listening to me right now, I always ask the question, so what's the philosophical basis? What's the philosophical underpinning? So the same question was the psychological or and philosoph philosophical basis of appreciative teaching and learning approach. It's social constructionism. Okay, social constructionism, which postulates that what we focus on becomes our reality. What we focus on becomes our reality. This perception of reality or the meaning we ascribe to reality, in turn, is generative. It grows. Ibig sabi ng generative. It grows. No? In that, it leads to activity. It leads to action. In many situations, the results of the activity are confirmatory of the original meaning. So what we focus on becomes our reality. Now, where did we get that? I don't know if you have heard of this, the Pygmalion effect, or what they call the Rosenthal effect. Okay. The effect is named after the Greek myth of Pygmalion, you know, a sculptor who fell in love with the statue, had carved, or alternately after the psychologist Robert Rosenthal. The Pygmalion effect follows full administrators. Now, psychologist Robert Rosenthal wrote that teachers or even administrators no, who hold high expectations of their st students or their teachers no, have better performing students and teachers than, uh, than those teachers with low expectations. I repeat, no, teachers who hold high expectations of their students have better performing students than those teachers with low expectations. According to the Pygmalion effect, people internalize the labels. You know what labels are? Sometimes I know teachers, we are not aware of this, but many times we are guilty of putting labels on our students. Ah, this student is courteous. Ah, this one is respectful. Ah, this one is talkative. Ah, this one is whatever. Hmm? I'm sure all of us are guilty of that. We are not aware sometimes. No? So it says here that people internalize the labels placed unto them by others. Thus, those who receive positive labels okay, from others are considered to think more positively of themselves. While those receiving negative labels think negatively of themselves. These ideas of self can affect performance with positive ideas of self-producing better performance. So, I'm sure there are parents who are listening to me right now. Maybe you have children. See? So, <laughs> let's try to practice this. Big Malion effect. I know, again, as I said, it's not easy. It takes AI. No? It takes appreciative inquiry to be able to wear no, that appreciative eye. 
So instead of saying, ah, this student is tech talkative. No, why you, don't you just, oh, this, this student's really good because he's so expressive. He's so expressive of his feelings. No? He's so articulate, right? No, instead of saying talkative. Okay. Now, that is how we translate appreciative inquiry to appreciative teaching and learning approach. I hope you got it. Now, let's translate it to appreciative advising. Because as teachers, I believe, as ed educators, school administrators, we are all advisors. Okay? So our roles as guides to our learners extend even beyond the four walls of the classroom. This is reinforced by your engagement in guiding students' decision-making in terms of career choices, relationships, no? lalo yung mga teenagers, high school dyan na nag-open up na sayo, sa inyo tungkol sa love life. No? We can engage ourselves no? in their decision-making, setting their life goals, and even their day-to-day -day activities. Thus, we have what we call appreciative advising, which is helpful for you as, let's say, classroom advisor or homeroom advisor, what else, guidance counselor, let's say, principal, club advisor, research advisor, or in any capacity as member of the academic community. Now, Bloom et al. in 2008 defined appreciative as advising as the intentional, again, we are very consistent on the word intentional. It's deliberate, it's intentional, no? collaborative practice, practice of asking positive, open-ended, not answerable by yes or no, no, to help students optimize their educational experience and achieve their dreams, goals, and potentials. Okay? So that is what we mean by appreciative advising. Now, I think this is where we can really engage ourselves, not physically, but it can be remotely. I remember when I was a very, very, very young teacher, no, at the age of 19, going 20, in my alma mater, College of the Holy Spirit, I was involved in the strategic planning workshop of our institution. And that time, there was a book that's early 80s, no, book by John Nisbet. The title is Mega Trends. And this was shared to me or to us, no, the members of the planning team, by one of our facilitators or speakers. In that book, John Nisbet said, when everything is high touch, human beings will long for the high touch. When everything is high tech, like what's happening now, everything is high tech, everything is online, even work, no? even doctors are doing online, you know, a tele, how do you call that? Teleconsultation. You know? When everything is high tech, human beings will long for the high touch. Have you experienced that during this pandemic? Huh? Even if you meet online, Zoom meeting or whatever, you now sometimes you you do. Some people do kara a video care karaoke on Zoom. They play on uh, Kahoot, etc. But you know, there's nothing that will ever ever replace face to face encounter with our students. So that was in the 80s. Imagine. Little did we know that later, two decades later, am I correct? No, we will long for the high touch. But I believe, even if we cannot face them, I mean, meet them face to face, we can still be high touch. No? How can we do that? No? Perhaps on the first day of classes, no, if you're doing Zoom classes, no, perhaps you ask them the same question that I asked you a while ago. What was the best thing that ever happened to you during this pandemic? I'm sure no, their eyes will, will, you know, will brighten and they will tell you, oh, kinds of, you know, wonderful activities that they had during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Or let's say, for example, if it's modular, now isn't it you have the printed modules? I heard that in DepEd, for example, you, you bring the modules or you deliver by courier or whatever, no? the modules to the students. Now, perhaps you can put on some note no, on the first page and dear, make it personal. Dear Maria, how I wish I could meet you personally during this uh, school year, but because of this, so I would love to see you. Now tell me next time when you submit your when you submit your output or your answers to the module module questions, can you tell me about your experiences that during the pandemic? What inspired you? Something like that, no? You can still be high touch. In other words, in other words, I uh, words, I think 
we need to go back to the basics. Back to the basics. We are back to writing. Right? We are back to, you know, drawing heart, heart, heart. No? If we don't have access to technology. See? So that's one way or of, you know, becoming more high touch even though we cannot meet each other face to face. Okay? So those are just some examples that you can do. Now, in appreciative advising, it also makes use of the 4D cycle. But there's a modification again because it makes use of six, no? the six Ds of appreciative advising. And this, no? dear participants, teachers, and administrators, is something that you can now make use of as a guide in designing your blueprint for appreciative advising. And what are the six Ds? Number one is disarm. Second is discover. Third is dream, design, deliver, don't settle. Disarm. You know what? This is really something very important no? during this time of the pandemic. You have to make yourself felt by the students or by your learners. Not physically, perhaps. By how? By making them feel that they are safe, that they have a safe environment. Provide a welcoming atmosphere because first impressions are very important. You know what? Uh, in, the, in, in NTTCHP, I teach all health professionals. And I have this uh, uh, one class. All of them are oncologists. No? They work with cancer patients. And during my first day of classes, I asked the same question, just one question. What was the best thing that ever happened to you in your life? Not during the pandemic. No? What was the best thing that, you ever, that ever happened to you? And they would share a lot of stories. And after that, they'd say, you know what, ma'am? This class is really a breather. A breather. Why? Because they have been no, talking to a lot of cancer patients. It's toxic. But when they come to your class... Now, it's not that they're relaxed and they don't study, but still, you give them that very relaxing atmosphere of learning. Okay? Disarm. Second is discover. The same questions. Ask open-ended questions. Draw out no? what they enjoy doing, their strengths, and their passion. Then allow them to dream. Formulate a vision, what they might become, and then assist them in developing, developing their life and career goals. It says, take note, assists. You will not make the dream for them you will assist them in designing their dreams or discovering their dreams. And then design helps students devise concrete, incremental, and achievable goals. And then follow through on their plans no? and make sure that you make them feel confident, that you believe in their capacities and in their strengths. And lastly, no? don't settle. You challenge your students, especially at this time of the pandemic. Mahirap mangarap, but you challenge them no, to proactively raise their internal bar of self-expectations. See? So these are the six days of appreciative advising. Disarm, discover, dream, design, deliver, don't settle. I think an AI teacher, one of the characteristics no, that an AI advocate or teacher must have is empathy. Again, that's my poster. Mm -hmm. One of the inspirations I got, I got no, in one Sunday. Uh, uh, one Sunday no. What is empathy? Empathy is seeing with the eyes of another listening with the ears of another, and feeling with the heart of another. In other words, no, empathy for us educators is to be able to see with the eyes of our students, to listen with the ears of our learners, and to feel with the heart of every child entrusted to our care. You see, they are entrusted. Every learner in our class is entrusted to our care. Principle of loco parentis, we are parents to our learners or to our students. Okay. Now we go back to our learning outcomes. Have we achieved them? No? So remember that appreciative inquiry is the discovery of what gives life. 
something that inspires, something that strengthens. No? Dreams of what might be, endless possibilities, ambition to happen, designs what should be, what is ideal, and sustains to empower, to adjust, to learn, and improvise. The four D cycle of appreciative inquiry are adopted no? in the practice of appreciative teaching and learning approach. No? And which is grounded on social constructionism, it is student or learner-centered, and therefore we allow our students to tell their own stories. We need to listen to their own stories. We provide the opportunity for them to dream and to grow. No? We guide them in the construction of endless possibilities and journey with them in the teaching and learning process. So remember, teachers, that we are no longer the sage uh, on the stage, but the guides on the side. And therefore, we become facilitators of learning. The six days of appreciative advising, no, hopefully, hopefully, is enough guide for you to design your own appreciative advising blueprint that is applicable to your own context. When I say context, Either you are teaching preschool, high school, college, or you are a school administrator. So with that, dear participants, fellow educators, thank you for your participation. And I hope you know that this lecture was able to help you face the challenges of teaching and learning in the new normal. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening and participating. All right, thank you, Mom. Um, so my gosh, inspire, inspiring as ever. And I'm really, really clear. Right? And I was just chatting with Tony, and we're all inspired. And uh, this really throws me back to our days in Latran Calamba, Mom. And uh, during my college days, I, while I was um, doing my thesis, I was actually reading one of your books. And whew, <laughs> it's uh -huh. a major throwback to those times. And uh, um, let me just plug to ma'am, um, you cited an ILO report about um, the education, the impact on, on the youth, mm -hmm. no? So uh, we at the ABB uh, Youth for Asia all, uh, also um, did a study together with the ILO and it's mm -hmm. out already. We launched it two weeks ago and it's really, mm -hmm. really interesting, especially for teachers because uh, this, um, you know, enumerates uh, what are the impacts on our mm -hmm. students, on the youth, no? So parents, we always look at them as, you know, resilient, uh, can always adapt, but behind the scenes, you know, they have something to tell us. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to share the link later to that particular. Um, yes. Thank you. Sam. Yeah. I'm going to yes. share it with you all, with, with, yeah. our, with our educators, because uh, we also use the appreciative inquiry in, you know, figuring out the future of work our futures in several economies. So I'm doing a shameless plug about our ongoing symposium in the okay. Asia Pacific region. And um, my personal notes here, I'm, I have lots of notes, yeah. Uh, as 21st century uh, learners, we uh, emphasize no, different kinds of uh, competences, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And it's really from the ground up, especially in the new normal, uh, we have to take note that uh, our students come from various backgrounds. They, their tabula rasa is so, so over. It's in the ancient times. And mm -hmm. we have to take note that uh, they have something to bring to the table. And yeah. it's asking the right questions that matter, you know. Um, and exactly. as us uh, in the development sector, we always, um, well, it's a tradition to always ask, what's the problem? What do we do with the problem? What? How do we solve? <laughs> How do we solve that? It's a traditional paradigm. How about we, uh, you know, uh, do a paradigm shift and look at our strengths? Mm, you know? Exactly. And mm, that's all what we also do at practice. Uh, Tony, Tony's clapping. <laughs> that's our OD. That's our OD philosophy in practice. Yeah. We always co-create with our clients. Exactly. Switching this plug again. <laughs> and uh, if you're interested in. Uh, doing a rewatch, a replay of Nam M's uh, appreciative teaching and learning a post-pandemic approach lecture. It has 16 lessons, 10, more than 10 knowledge checks, and an e-certificate. It's now available on MoveUp. Mm, that's how we work <laughs> at MoveUp and Practice Associates. It's almost real time, no? We just had our lecture and it's now up on UpUpUp. So how do you do that? Go to MoveUp, that page, 
dot link slash get dash app. It's too long a link and Jamie just posted it in our chat box. So it's move up that page dot link slash get dash app. So yeah, if you're having a hard time, feel free to um, send us a message 